Zef, we want Poo Saga. Oh, y'all said you want a 20 second world tournament. <laughs> Be my guest. I know the Dragon Ball watchers were waiting for this one, but don't worry. The best YouTuber is coming back to feed y'all, I promise. And I know everyone wanted me to do Boo Saga, but I do not want y'all to ever expect what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna hit a left on purpose. We gonna talk about the most underrated arc within the entire series, in my opinion, the 20 second world tournament. I'm not even gonna talk too much, just getting right into it. Now the thing about this arc is that it's just good. It doesn't have as big of highs as a lot of other arcs, but it has damn near no lows. It's just very good at what it does, and it does nothing wrong. It's just an average app player, and I really like that because there's so many arcs that I really, really like, but there's just that one thing that just piss me off and this arc doesn't have that at all it's just completely solid now, i can talk about a lot within this arc but we gonna start with the main nigga the absolute goat tn i don't want you to see how tn and chow pull up on him right here <laughs> i'm not gonna lie the turtle school might be washed what the crane school got right here oh my god that's drip but that's how you know you can't let old niggas style you because that hat Oh, no, nah, that gotta go. I don't know what Marshall's clearance been. You saw that in, but that gotta go, son. <laughs> that she trash. But Tien and Chow Tzu in this arc was really cooking. I'm gonna start with Chow Tzu first because I gotta get something off my chest. I don't know what it is about y'all TikTok niggas, but it's like the moment you're behind the screen, you feel like you could just talk and I'm gonna just let y'all slide because I'm not gonna let y'all slide. Like, please tell me why well, I posted a TikTok on why Chow Tzu shouldn't be a Z fighter and people were really putting the fist up for Chow Tzu. Telling me, <laughs> looks like someone hasn't read original Dragon Ball. As if I said anything wrong. Like, there was people really in the comments talking about some, oh, Chow Tzu was really boxing with the Ginyu Force. As if that's not filler. That's number one. And I got someone else in the comment section talking about some, respect Chow Tzu. He helped in the King Piccolo arc. He got booed before he could even finish his sentence. But yeah, man, he helped. He helped. So since Chow Tzu's stepping up, y'all don't need Goku, right? So when Goku beat King Piccolo, that's because Chow Tzu stepped up! And don't even get me started on the fact that he got knocked out of the entire 23rd World Tournament arc by Tao Pai Pai. And Tien tells him to go home before every single major battle, even before the Saiyans, and they both train together. Because Tien knows Chao Tzu ain't about that smoke. But someone in the comments will come up to me and say, I bet you wouldn't say that to Tien's face. A fictional character?! I'm sorry, man. It's just, bro, every single time I be posting these shorts or these TikToks, y'all just get me so riled up because you act like I don't know what I'm saying. <sighs> My fault, man. What was, what was I even talking about, bro? Chao Tzu, yeah. Chao Tzu in this arc was actually really good because he was really frying my boy Krillin so bad. It was actually kind of hilarious. Like, this scene right here cracks me up every single time. That's it? You've only got one hair, you basic unicorn. That's better than none. See, clap it up. That's a good moment. And I really like his fight against Krillin. When he first pulls up on him like this, that was also creepy as hell timing. I love that, bro. He really had Krillin on the ropes. And I really enjoy this fight, but sadly, that's the only real fight that Chao Tzu's really in. But he does do more within this arc, and I'm gonna get into it later when I gotta get to it. But we gonna go right to Tien, because Tien is the real GOAT. Now, Tien in this arc, he is really just a great antagonist. He's very sadistic, but it's not his own only character trait he gonna look out for his boy Chao Tzu if he has to he's gonna give respect to his opponents and his character progression throughout this arc is very enjoyable to watch when it came to Tien I'm telling you Toriyama went into his bag he got one of the best character arcs within the series in my opinion and not only that this man was a complete menace my boy Tien was a prestige level trash talker I'm not gonna lie and he would really just be violated for no reason and you know what I blame his knees I'm telling you he think he Captain Falcon or something because the way he continuously used his knee was insane you not in melee little bro like my man was actually out there violating Jackie Chun is halfway to the grave and he still dropped that nigga with his knee Goku gets distracted for 0.2 seconds and Tien slams him with a cheap shot my nigga out here moving like Ryan Garcia don't even get me started on what he does to Yamcha oh another day is gone I'm still all alone how could this 
But before I continue with Tien, respect Yamcha. I know so many people clown this scene because Tien broke Yamcha's leg. Ha ha ha. It's so funny. But just like Yamcha's fight with the Cybermen, I know damn well y'all niggas did not see this entire fight. It's even worse in Tien's case. Because in the Yamcha versus Tien fight, Yamcha was cooking. To the point where Tien's like, oh nah, this nigga can actually run the ones. Because Yamcha is actually that nigga. He just be getting snuffed with all of his matchups. He be getting the strongest niggas of all time in his first round. But the Japanese version of this fight is so fire. They played Yamcha's theme throughout this, man. Oh my goodness. It makes this whole so enjoyable to watch. And it's just like, bro, Yamcha, you my go. I'm telling you, him and Tien were going back to back to back. Tien was even giving Yamcha respect after this fight. And was even like, yeah, now the turtle school way better than I thought. Because of who? Yamcha put respect on my boy's name immediately. And not only that, he's like, what, the second character in the series other than Master Roshi? and Goku to do the Kamehameha? Oh man, I'm about to turn this into a Yamcha glazing video. Sadly, it's the only fight Yamcha gets, but I really enjoy this fight. But back to Yamcha's theme, this theme is an absolute banger. Back in my sophomore year, I was walking down them hallways listening to Kendrick Lamar immediately to this in the same breath with no shame. I'm telling you, they snapped so so hard with this theme. You have not experienced life if you have not listened to this theme yet. Tien versus Jackie Chun, aka Master Roshi. This fight is absolutely fantastic too. You wanna talk about straight hands? This gotta be one of the best fights in the series when it comes to it. I'm telling you, they was going hit for hit. It was insane. I really like how this fight is choreographed, and I really like Toriyama's art within this fight in the manga. Which brings me to my next point. I feel like the anime does not do this arc justice. Now, quick little background for you guys. The reason why there's a Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z split is because Toriyama's editor wanted more funding for the Dragon Ball anime. And the best way to receive said funding was to put the series in a completely different brand. And in this plan, he wanted to change the animation staff and everything that went into the process of making this series. Because in his own words, he said the original Dragon Ball anime did not capture the intensity of these fights. And I'm not gonna lie, when I read some of these fights and then I go to watch the anime equivalent, I'm just like damn this nigga low-key spit maybe it's because toriyama is extremely good at making manga but some of these hits are so impactful just for the anime to make them look way weaker than they should and some of these actions seem 10 times faster in the manga as well just for the anime to really drag it out to be fair this old as hell the Dragon Ball anime was like 20 before half y'all niggas was even born. But if he was seeing it even back then, I can't give it that many excuses. Not saying the Dragon Ball anime looks bad. There's a lot of great portions throughout this arc and many other arcs as well. But more often than not, they're gonna mess up a lot of intense moments. And in this arc especially, I see it like crazy. I'll throw some comparisons up on the screen. I hope I already did. I also link some manga paneling videos in the comments, not only just that I've made, but other people have made so you can understand what I mean by how masterful Toriyama has made this manga and why even in the manga, certain actions can look way faster than how it comes off in the anime. The Tien versus Jackie Chun fight doesn't really have this problem though. I feel like a lot of this fight is animated quite well and the impact is just as hard as it looks like in the manga and I really enjoy this scuffle. This nigga Tien was really trying to flex in Jackie Chun's face just because he was old. Talking about something, you can't even see my hands, can you? Only for Jackie Chun to completely embarrass this nigga. Like, don't sleep on the goat, bruh. You new niggas run shit for one year and you think you all that. You're trash. But yeah, they was really moving crazy. Tien embarrasses bro by doing a Kamehameha on his first attempt just to show how basic of a key blast it is. And Jackie Chun just gives up his fight. And I really love the conversation that they have after this. Great closure to Master Roshi's arc as well as boosting Tien's character. And one thing about this fight that always be having me crying. You know, Master Roshi is surprised as hell that Tien can just pull off a Kamehameha just like this. And Tien knows it's just a basic key blast and it took Master Roshi like 50 years to learn and it's like yeah that's so impressive but when you're reading the series in hindsight the amount of characters that people call fodder that can just completely wash original Dragon Ball is absolutely insane like I'm telling you a pool with 
Eve clears all of Earth. And now I'm about to go to the next person, Goku. The way Goku is written within this arc, in my personal opinion, is the most mature he has ever been. Is he still stupid at times? Yeah. When it comes to just battle knowledge and the way he was maneuvering throughout all of these fights, I don't think we ever saw a more locked in Goku in any other arc. I'm sorry. And this is coming from one of the biggest Namek Goku D riders on the planet. This Goku was showing so much technique, so much battle experience. It's actually astonishing. Look at some of the stuff he pulls within Tien's fight, bro. He pump fakes a Kamehameha because he knows he's going to need that energy later on. Just by seeing the solar flare one time, he uses that knowledge to steal the sunglasses. He double bluffs Tien Zanzo Ken. This man Tien was trying to flex four arms just for Goku to be like, I've got eight, but it's just this nigga moving at super speed. I mean, that's my goat, nigga. Stop playing with him. A lot of people really like this scene too, where he's like, I was fighting 100% at my tournament level. Now I'm going to go to my real full power, whether it's life or death. I love that scene too. I'm telling you, Goku in this arc was just different, I swear. I really like his fight against this dude right here. I think his name is Pamput. Number one, I just like Pamput's design a lot. And I really just like Goku washing niggas. So even though this fight's like two pages, I love it. Everybody be gassing Goku versus Krillin. This fight is great. When most people talk about this fight, they talk about this scene right here. I know damn well y'all seen this scene 15 million times. I'm not even gonna talk about it. There's a lot of creative stuff that they do throughout this fight, especially Krillin. My man was going crazy but the main part i want to talk about is this right here but the way toriyama handled this in the manga i don't even know why goku went that hard on this nigga so goku locks in he just dashes right at krillin and he starts charging the kamehameha while sprinting this is one of the coldest ones in the series my boy jumps like 15 feet in the air beams that hole in the opposite direction goes right at krillin and slams that nigga in the dome and while krillin is still getting launched by that punch my boy does 50 somersaults in the air just to catch up to krillin and knees that nigga right in the chest and look at my boy's pupils bro he's finished this is one of the best parts of this fight and no one talks about it and the way goku finishes off krillin is cold as hell too my man was moving so fast honing in on krillin the only person that could see him was tn he could barely see him himself and i love how the page looks in the manga too it's just perfect even Tien was shook, bro. He knew Goku was him. But this entire fight is great. And then all that's left is a finale. Goku versus Tien. If I was to make a top 10 canon Dragon Ball fight list, only counting the original Dragon Ball manga run, this will probably reach the top 10. Yeah, the choreography of this fight is absolutely fantastic and i love how especially within these final battles toriyama goes absolutely insane with the creativity i don't know if i'm ever going to cover this fight but the 21st world tournament when i reread that a while back i was shocked with the amount of stuff that toriyama was pulling out every single chapter it was like everything that came within his head he would just put on the page and it was just so fun to see and he does the same thing here and i feel like that's the reason why a lot of the techniques that show up throughout these tournaments never get seen again because Toriyama just be pulling half of this out of his ass never see Tien grow arms again Piccolo never goes giant again until freaking superhero literally 95% of the techniques that Master Roshi used within his first fight he does not use ever again I wouldn't even call it L writing or none of that I think Toriyama would just make these techniques on the spot but this fight uses a lot of great techniques not just for Tien but for Goku as well like this part right here I love how it's tail is used throughout his combat this does not happen that often and right after that hit tien goes right into the air goku's not letting him slide he goes right towards tien he got my boy on lock on just for tien to beam him in the face with a dodonpa goku jumps right out the hole and look at him doing all this just for theatrics bro dashes right at tien again and then he vanishes he's doing the same thing he did to krillin all you hear is his feet oh that nigga cooked tien finds him because his third eye in this arc is a mother effing cheat code bro it don't matter what you put in front of him he gonna be like huh my third eye can see through anything really mess up nigga when tian charges right at goku he's about to go crazy look at this pose he strikes right here nah every time you see a dragon ball character strike a pose you know they about to violate and the zestier the pose is the harder they gonna violate because right after this tian destroys goku with the volleyball fist and look at how he starts this off Damn.
with the heart emoji and everything. Oh, nah. If they hit a pose with just the slightest hint of zest, you might as well go home. This man, Ginyu, was hitting the ice spice 30 years before y'all even knew who she was. And look at how my mans was cooking. And don't even get me started on my mans raccoon. But this fight is just absolutely sick. I love all the stuff that it's able to pull off and the way it intertwines the main story in it as well. With Chaozu snuffing Goku mid-fight by paralyzing him, only for Tien to confront his master one-on-one -on -one just because of this, it's fire. Tien really respects the honor of a 1v1. He is the first respectable bald person in Dragon Ball. I'm telling you, he's not like Krillin. Krillin was out here jumping everyone he fought in the series. Bro was on Guldo just like this. Yeah, Swing! It's Swing! <laughs> Yo, you, yo, you lagging! Nah! Yo, nah! I really love how this fight ends, and Goku getting snuffed by Truck Coon gotta be insane! It does leave a lot of intrigue for the next tournament, and it's just a great twist, because you really think Goku would've won this. You could see this as a plot snuff, but it's something so stupid that only Dragon Ball could think of, bro. I don't really care. But anyways, this arc is absolutely incredible, has a lot of great fights, great themes it is short and concise it's only like 20 to 30 chapters death give it a watch it is one of the best that dragon ball has